looks so good. I can't wait to try it. Wow. Hi friends, welcome to the Sunshine Farm. Today I'm going to share my very first recipe video with you inspired by growing microgreens at home. This 20 minute plant based pasta dish is a take on Alfredo but uses much healthier ingredients. Many of the ingredients you probably already have at home. This recipe serves about four to six people or for Chris and what he eats probably about four people. <laughs> so here's what you need for this recipe. The first thing you're going to need is one and a half cups of cashews. That's the base of this dish and definitely the most important ingredient. The next thing is water. Simple, you should have that at home. You'll also need a plant-based milk. You can use regular milk here, but that's going to make it no longer plant-based and also no longer dairy-free, but it's totally up to you. We used almond milk for this dish, unsweetened almond milk. The next main ingredient is nutritional yeast. This may be an ingredient you're not used to, and even though it has yeast in the name, it is still gluten-free, so don't worry there. You can find nutritional yeast for just about $5, and you can also buy it online if you don't have it at your local grocery store, so I'll put a link to Amazon in the description below. The next ingredients are really all herbs and some spices. About a tablespoon of garlic and then a teaspoon of salt, rosemary, and garlic powder. The last ingredient is totally optional but inspired me to make this dish, so I definitely want to include it, and that is microgreens, which you can buy at the store, but they can be a little bit pricey at times, or you can grow that at home with just a few dollars of seed packets, and they're really fun and a great way to get your growing on in the middle of winter. On top of the ingredients you will need for the sauce, you will also need some pasta, so that is a must when you're making a pasta dish. If you're going gluten-free, there's definitely some great options. We get ours generally at Trader Joe's, but we've seen the same type of pasta at Aldi, and also at our general grocery store. If you don't need a gluten-free option, that's fine too. We unfortunately have to do that whether we like it or not. So we get the gluten-free brown rice-based pasta and it works perfectly for us. We don't have any problems with it being too hard or too mushy. Today I'm going to be using a fettuccine gluten-free pasta that I picked up at the store, but you can definitely buy any other pasta you want, whether it's fettuccine or fusilli. I don't know how to pronounce that, but we use the fusilli for this most of the time. So what makes this sauce so quick and so easy is you really just throw all the ingredients into a blender, turn the blender on, and it's going to be done in just a couple minutes. So the first thing I'm going to do is to start by getting a pot of boiling water ready for my pasta. And then while that's getting ready to boil, I will make the sauce. So now that the water's going, I'm gonna go ahead and add all of my sauce ingredients to the blender, starting with the cashews. Do you guys call it cashews? Or cashews? Or cashew? I don't know, I feel like every time I say it, somebody corrects me. The next thing I'm going to add is the almond milk. Three-fourths cups, and then three-fourths cup of water. The next is the nutritional yeast. Then I add just about a fourth cup. Then I'm going to add <coughs> that dust from that. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going to add my garlic. So about a tablespoon of garlic. We love garlic, so um, can't have too much. And hopefully next year, I'll be using homegrown garlic and not this store-bought stuff, which is fine for now, but not ideal. Then I'm gonna add the teaspoon of rose dried rosemary. Rosemary smells so good. Now just a little bit of onion powder. And the last thing is just a teaspoon of salt. You're going to want to use a high-powered blender if you have one. If you don't have one, I recommend soaking the cashews for a few hours to up to 24 hours beforehand. You could also use a food processor if you have one of those, and that would probably do the trick as well. You want to stop blending when you open up the lid and it's just nice and creamy and there's no like bumps or funny texture and I always just try it just to make sure I don't need to add any spices that's perfect 
it's so rich and creamy and has like the hint of cheesiness and garlic flavor and onion and salt. Really, really good. I'm going to go ahead and add this pasta. This pasta only serves about two people, so I'm only gonna use half the sauce for today. But I'm gonna add it to the boiling water, awkwardly. Be careful not to burn myself. And I think it's just a couple minutes, let's see. Three to four minutes for al dente. Al dente, al dente, I think it's al dente. All the dentes. <laughs> And it's really important to just do al dente because you're gonna be adding the sauce over the pasta. And so you don't wanna cook the pasta too much because it's gonna cook just a little bit more once you add the sauce. This thing is awesome. It will sit right on top of your sink, on the edges of your sink, so that you don't have to like hold it with one hand and then pour the pot with your other hand. Love this thing. I don't know what it's called, but I'll find it and link it in the description. Rinsing pasta is especially important when you have a gluten-free pasta. I'm going to go ahead and pour this back into the pot. And then I'm going to add about half of my sauce. Set the burner at low and just mix this around. You'd be amazed at how much this looks like fettuccine alfredo. Now we're going to go fix the microgreens. About a week and a half now, I've had these microgreens going. So I'm just gonna cut them towards the base. Grab some for our pasta. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take some spoonfuls of the pasta. It looks so good. Chris is going to get a couple of heaping um, spoonfuls because <laughs> he will still want seconds even after this. I can guarantee you that much. Make sure you turn off your stove afterwards. That is something I frequently forget, but hopefully you're not like me and likely to burn down your house. The last thing I do is just sprinkle a couple little dashes of paprika. This looks so good, I can't wait to try it. Wow. I had no idea I would be able to make something so quickly with so few ingredients that mimics the idea of Alfredo so much. Definitely try this guys, it's really, really easy. And if you try it, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, do you like these recipe videos? Are they interesting? Are they helpful? Do they inspire you to get cooking in the kitchen? Let me know, I would love to hear. This is our first one. We're excited to share more with you. Thanks so much for watching this video. We're going to get eating and we can't wait to share our next one with you. If you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button down below so you can be the first one to see it. Thanks guys.